Hello, and this is Sunny. Welcome back. Today my topic is a spanning tree protocol. Before I talk about a spanning tree protocol, let me introduce two related concepts: a complete graph and a spanning tree. A complete graph is a graph in which each pair of graph vertices is connected by a line. In other words, when all the points are connected by the maximum number of lines, we get a complete graph. In the networking field, a complete graph is like a fully meshed network. Let's use this example. Three points A, B, C are connected by three lines. Every two points is connected. We get a complete graph. A spanning tree is different from A complete graph in terms of connecting lines. A complete graph is when all points are connected by a maximum number of lines, while a spanning tree is when all points are connected by a minimum number of lines. From this one complete graph, we can get three spanning trees. One, A is connected directly to both B and C. And B and C are indirectly connected through A. A is a central point. All three points are connected, and no loop is formed. Two, B is connected directly to both A and C. B is a bridge between A and B, and B is a central point. All three points are connected, and no loop is formed. Three, C is connected directly to both A and B, and C is a bridge between A and B. And C is a central point. All three points are connected, and no loop is formed. A spanning tree has two basic features. One, a spanning tree has no loop. Two, a spanning tree is minimally connected. Removing one line will leave some point disconnected. Spanning tree protocol, or STP, is a layer two protocol that runs on bridges and switches, and it builds a loop-free logical topology. There are different flavors of spanning tree protocols, but IEEE 802.1D is the original standard protocol. Keep in mind, the main purpose of STP is to eliminate loops. To do so. Spanning tree protocol will take three basic steps. One, it selects one switch as a root bridge. Root bridge is the central point on the network. Two, it chooses the shortest path from a switch to the root bridge. Three, it blocks links that could cause loops while maintaining these links as backups. In other words. STP can activate a blocked link if an active link breaks. Thus, it provides fault tolerance for a network. Let's look at an example. Suppose we have four switches A, B, C, and D on a local area network. There are redundant links among these interconnected switches. For example, from switch D to switch A. There are two paths, DBA and DCA. Link redundancy is necessary for the network availability. However, redundant links will create layer two loops. How does a network block unwanted links that could cause loops while maintaining link redundancy? The answer is STP. First, STP elects one switch as the root bridge. The lowest bridge ID determines the root bridge. I leave the election details to my next video. I try to simplify the process so that we can see the whole picture in this video. Here, switch A is elected as the root bridge. Next, each of other switches. Chooses the path to the root bridge with the least path cost. 
Path cost is calculated based on link bandwidth. The higher bandwidth, the lower the path cost. Let's skip the details of calculation and mark the path cost for each link. Now, take a look at switch B. For switch B, there are two paths to reach root bridge, BDCA and BA. The path BDCA costs 7 and the path BA costs 2. Therefore, the link BA is choosing as the path from switch B to root bridge A. This port is selected as a root port. A root port is the port with the least cost path to the root bridge. The other end is a designated port. From switch C to root bridge, there are two paths, CDBA and CA. The shortest path is CA because it costs 1. Thus, this port is selected as a root port. The other end is selected as a designated port. Now, let's check with switch D. There are two paths from D to A, DBA and DCA. DBA costs 4 and DCA costs 5. Thus, DBA is the preferred path. This port is selected as a road port. The other end on switch B is a designated port. Keep in mind, a non road switch can have many designated ports, but it can have one road port only. Besides, all ports of the road bridge are designated ports. On the road bridge, there is no road port. We are done. Every switch has found a best path to reach the road bridge. The link between DC should be blocked in order to eliminate a loop. Now let's look at the blocked link DC. One port should be designated port and the other end should be in a blocking state. The port with the lower switch ID is selected as a designated port. Therefore, the other end is a blocking port. The blocking port can still receive frames, but it will not forward nor send frames. It simply drops them. From this example, we can see electing the road bridge is the key process because it determines all other steps. In my next video, I will focus on how spanning tree protocol chooses the switch as a road bridge and what is a BPDU frame. Please stay tuned. I hope this video is helpful. If you want to learn network systematically, please check out my playlists. They are organized by topics. Thank you very much and see you next time.